something awful happened to me and I nearly died. I'm going to tell you now what happened. So, bizarrely enough, the story actually begins on my mum's birthday, October 11th. Morgan bought me a spa break for my 59th birthday, although he put 80th on it. So mum was feeling unwell, but she decided to go to the spa anyway on Tuesday the 18th. First day I got there, managed about three hours, and then I had to go and lay down. Whilst at the spa, she would get worse, feel more unwell, and that's when she went to sleep and then didn't wake up. An ambulance came really quickly and there was about four people in the room trying to revive me. They rushed me to um, a hospital. The last thing I remember is just laying in bed on a Tuesday night and not feeling well. Now I've arrived at the hospital, I've gone straight to A&E, which is where mum is, and that's when I've walked in and seen mum. She was hooked up to loads of different machines. It was honestly one of the scariest things I've ever seen in my life. Now, mum was breathing, but she wasn't fully conscious. What that means is she was moving very slightly. She was uh, opening her eyes, but she couldn't speak or sit up or walk or, or anything like that. She was making the slightest movements. Um, but one movement she did make was when she saw me, she smiled and the uh, nurses and everyone at the hospital said that that is the first time she'd smiled uh, all day since going in. So the hospital treated me for uh, what I had, which was bacterial meningitis and COVID on either lucky one. Um, and they were pumping me full of, full of antibiotics and whatever else they were pump I pumping me full of. I had no idea whatsoever. Now meningitis is the inflammation of the lining around your brain and I didn't even think it was serious. I remember I got a jab for it in school, but I didn't know it could lead to something like this where my own mum couldn't even speak or say my name. So, I mean, it's quite funny now thinking back, but it's not funny. But on the Saturday, um, apparently, I started making um, steps to move. I had to have a one-to-one -one nurse with me because I was hallucinating and I thought I was in a hotel for some reason and I had to get downstairs to walk the pucks. So someone was sat on the door keeping me in. Now in more severe cases of meningitis, you can actually experience things like double vision and hallucinations and that's what mum was going through. So yeah, hallucinations. So Martin, if you turn around to that clock round there, anything that I thought or said, I could see it going on the wall next to the clock and it was really, really scary. I thought I was driving around the streets on my bed, trying to turn it like with my body around corners. The police were chasing me, so I managed to lose them, but then I got a 250 pound parking so ticket. you were playing GTA 5 on a hospital bed. <laughs> I'm sat, right, mum's in the bed, she's just out of her mind, right? And then she goes to me, Morgan, watch out, there's a dog, it's humping your leg. <laughs> no, I didn't. There was a man in a green and black shirt, sort of next to me all the time, and I was talking to him, and I kept reaching out, and he wasn't there, and I'm like, oh, no, you're not real, are you? And I remember picking up her dog poo at, at two o'clock in the morning next, next to my bed. A dog had just run in the bedroom. <laughs> on the floor. And I think the worst one was when I first sort of came round at the hospital and I, and I was trying to escape and I thought, I've got to go, I've got to get downstairs and feed the dogs, they need feeding. The stuff I was thinking, um, hallucinating, was uh, crazy and I, and I believed all of it. Now, on a more serious note, I was really, really emotional around this time because on one hand I was so happy that my mum was speaking and walking and moving and on the other hand I was so worried that my mum would never be able to get back to herself again. I, um, I was worried she was never going to remember all her friends and, um, and all the amazing people that care about her. I was so scared and I didn't know what to say and I was just praying she was going to keep getting better and make a full recovery and eventually be back to herself again. Unfortunately, over the next week, that is exactly what happened. So, I guess from then, I, I started to slowly get better, and, and it was slowly. For instance, um, I, I wasn't allowed my phone because I wasn't classed as capable of having it until 
I think three days before I actually left the hospital. Morgan brought me um, some clothes, he brought me a Nintendo Switch to keep me occupied. Actually guys, I'm quite proud because I managed to get the Nintendo Switch working. Over the next week I went to the hospital, kept visiting her and every time I saw her, she was better and better and better. The hallucinations were slowing down, she was remembering more and more about me, herself friends. The other thing is Morgan came to see me and for some reason I was doing adding up and sums on a bit of paper and I'm, I've kept them and to be honest they make no sense whatsoever. It's so embarrassing. Until finally on Sunday the 30th of October, 11 days after going into the hospital, it was time for her to come home and she'd made an almost full recovery. And guys, this is a little tour of the room, which is really quite nice, which is why I thought it was a hotel, but I don't know, I was hallucinating. The first time I used the shower, I had to have a nurse wash my hair and wash me. I was that bad, I just couldn't even walk. I was like wobbling all over the place. So I was basically training to do the High Rocks uh, competition, went to a umbilical hernia, and then a few weeks later, ended up in here and nearly died. Onward bound! Hooray! I must get lucky from now on. Do you think? <laughs> yeah. Now the scary thing is, the more I researched meningitis, the more I realised that if mum hadn't got into the hospital as quick as she had, she wouldn't have got the treatment she needed quick enough. And she either wouldn't have made a full recovery, or she might have not even been here today. She, she could have died. And the maddest thing is, if mum wasn't in that spa, if she was just at home in her side, maybe I wouldn't have checked on her quick enough. And even if I did go up to her room and check on her and she was just asleep, would I have thought to shake her and check that she was conscious? No, I would have just assumed she was sleeping. And by that point, it may have just been too late. To be honest guys, um, I just cannot thank the hospital enough. If I had not got there as quick as what I did, if I'd have been on my own that night and not found, then I think this would have been a different story. Um, so I'm just so appreciative to everybody um, that I'm actually still alive. Um, I think the worst thing for a mum is thinking that they're leaving their son behind. Sorry, we want to. I want to keep this optimistic because it's a, it's a good end to, to the um, to the story. Because I'm here. Just want to let you guys know, all the money made from this video will be going to Meningitis Now, which is a UK-based meningitis charity. If you want to, please go and support Mum because I know she will appreciate it. She loves you guys so much. And finally, if you guys have got any ideas of anything we could do to raise some money, comment down below and let us know. Thank you guys for all the support. It means a lot to us.